You're gonna learn how to live a no poo lifestyle. Shampoo, that is. I stopped using shampoo four years ago and no one can tell the difference. I mean, you can look for yourself, right? Not oily or gross or anything. Looks like normal hair. Well, I haven't used anything but water on it for over four years now and I'm never going back to shampooing it. Think I'm crazy? Think again. There are certain inputs or things that your body needs, right? Vitamin D is one of them. If you don't get enough vitamin D from the sun or from your diet, your body will actually start to break down, or right? it needs vitamin D, it can have a vitamin D deficiency. But then there are other things your body doesn't need, but might like, like coffee or cigarettes. If you don't smoke for a few years, it's not like you're going to have a cigarette deficiency that will harm you, right? It could actually be helpful. And if you never started smoking or never started drinking coffee, you probably never want nicotine or caffeine in the first place. It's tempting to treat certain lifelong habits as if they're vitamins, but they often aren't. If you're addicted to smoking cigarettes every morning, you might feel like you need them to survive, but you obviously don't. Shampoo is kind of similar, albeit much less harmful, of course. No one has a shampoo deficiency, and if you never started using it, you'd never feel like you need it. But if you've been using it your whole life, it might feel like it's essential. Advocates of no poo have been saying that the beauty industry basically invented this need over the last hundred years. Conventional shampoo only started to be sold in the 30s, and we didn't start regularly shampooing as a daily thing until the last 50 years or so. But once you start shampooing more regularly, it creates this vicious cycle where your hair stops being able to produce all of the oil and natural maintenance that it needs on its own because it starts relying on the shampoo, and then you start Start getting that gross, greasy hair you think of when you stop using it. But just like your body would relearn how to wake up on its own if you quit caffeine, quitting shampoo can give your hair the chance to recover and relearn how to take care of itself. And there are good reasons to consider stopping using shampoo. I mean, for one, what are you really putting in your hair? Let's just grab a leftover bottle here. All right, so I got this bottle that uh, is left over that Cosette was using. But I mean, this has, let's see, we've got uh, water, okay. Good. <laughs> uh, sodium laureth sulfate, cocoa, mitopropyl, betanine, glycol, desterate, sodium chloride, hydrolyzed elastin, hydrolyzed keratin. I mean, it goes on. I'm not even like 20% through the list. And look, I know I'm not a crazy, like, oh, all chemicals are bad, because that's obviously not true. But we also don't know that they're not bad, right? And if you don't need to be rubbing mystery chemicals into your scalp every day, then why would you exactly? But if you do want specific examples, there are actually a couple compounds commonly found in shampoo that have some concerning effects on our hormonal system. For one, parabens are a really common ingredient in almost every consumer shampoo, and you can really easily look up if yours has it in it. Parabens are a common preservative that help increase the shelf life of shampoo, but when your body's exposed to them, they interact almost like estrogen. So by rubbing parabens into your scalp every day, you're actually giving yourself kind of a simulated low dose of estrogen, which could be significantly impacting your whole hormonal system. Most shampoos also have phthalates, which while they're not exactly mimicking estrogen the way parabens are, they have been shown to disrupt your hormonal system. So now you've got two things in a lot of shampoos that could be messing with your entire hormonal system coming you know, straight in through your head. And now to be really clear, nobody has proven that using shampoo messes up your hormonal system or that there is a clear and present danger to rubbing these things into your head. But there isn't really any indication that it doesn't do that either. And again, just because there's no evidence of risk doesn't mean that there's evidence of no risk. And to me, if I don't have to take that risk, then why would I take it? By the way, if you find stuff like this really interesting, be sure to subscribe because I've found out a lot of weird little health things over the years that I'm gonna be doing more videos on that could save you a bunch of research time and from rubbing mystery chemicals into your head uh, in the future. But anyway, is rubbing shampoo into your head bad for you? We don't 100% know. But again, if you don't have to take the risk, then why would you? So assuming you're on board, then you might be asking, okay, well, how do I quit, right? How do I stop using this? And you know, on one level, it's simple because quitting is just, you, you just stop. Right? It's, not, it's not that complicated. You just stop using shampoo. But that transition period can be kind of rough. So here are a few things that can help. If you've been using shampoo your whole life, your hair has basically stopped producing the oils that it needs to maintain healthy hair, right? Your hair is not immediately going to look normal if you stop using shampoo. And every time you reintroduce shampoo, you're stripping your hair of those oils and making it recover again. This is why I don't recommend trying to go down to using it once a week 
or you know a couple times a week and weaning off because again every time you use it you're resetting that recovery process so you do kind of have to go cold turkey here but to make cold turkey easier one thing you can do is try to shower with cold water or at least finish with cold water i know cold showers suck uh they can be great for your system and they're good for building willpower but they suck <laughs> especially if you're watching this in the winter so just finishing with a bit of cold water on your hair can help protect it because it does seem that showering with excessive hot water dries out the scalp makes it harder for your hair to take care of itself another thing that can help is do it on vacation so when i stopped using shampoo i was actually just living with a friend in argentina didn't really know anyone so i didn't care if i looked like a grease ball for a couple of weeks if you're going on vacation especially if you're going somewhere kind of tropical where you're going to get a lot of that ocean breeze your hair might actually fare a little bit better and and if you look a little grody, then you're not gonna mind as much because you're not gonna be on, you know, Zoom calls with your coworkers or go into restaurants with people you know, things like that. Another thing that really helps is waiting until you get a haircut to do this because simply having less hair makes it easier. This is part of the reason that a lot of men have an easier time adapting to no shampoo than women. And so if you wait until you get a haircut and then once you do, you just stop shampooing after that, less of your hair will have to adapt and it's just gonna be a little bit simpler uh, to get through that adaptation period. The last thing I'll mention that makes a big difference is getting your diet and your sleep in order. Order. Because one thing you'll discover is when you stop using shampoo, your hair becomes a very strong barometer for your health. Part of the reason we shampoo in the first place is to make our hair look really healthy and you know lighter and things that convey to other people that our bodies are healthy. Well, once you stop shampooing, your hair isn't gonna be able to hide those things anymore. So if you don't have you know a relatively good diet, if you don't have your sleep in order, your hair is gonna show that. So consider cleaning up some of that other stuff as well, because that is gonna help with any oiliness or greasiness. And if you want some tips on improving your sleep, Sleep, definitely check out the video it should be in this corner or something on uh, all my favorite sleep tech that I use to make this bedroom awesome. Aside from all that though, the most important ingredient for getting through the adaptation period is patience. Between weeks two and three, your hair is probably gonna look kind of nasty and you're gonna be a little embarrassed. And if you have a partner or you're living with some family, they're gonna look at you, they're gonna go, are you sure this is a good idea? Just push through it because around that three to four week mark, that's when most people's hair starts going back to normal and that's when you stop needing shampoo. One final benefit I'll mention is that giving up a common staple like shampoo can actually help you challenge some of your other assumptions in your life about what products you actually need, what habits you actually need, and what else you could experiment with getting rid of or changing. Another common example people experiment with is fasting, right? There's no reason you need to eat three meals a day and a lot of people see great benefit from skipping one of their meals or even going a couple days without eating, right? Common assumption that you have to eat three meals a day, but not true. Just like a common assumption that you need shampoo for your hair to look healthy, which is not true. So starting to think about other things you can experiment might help with making a lot of other really positive lifestyle improvements. I'm confident that if you follow this advice, if you get through the adaptation period, you can quit shampoo and no one will even notice. And if you want to find more ways to improve your health, definitely check out uh, the video on my continuous glucose monitor. And I just took it out this morning, so I don't have it on right now, but uh, it's a device that I use to track my blood sugar throughout the day and see how different foods are affecting me. And that should be in one of these corners here for you to check out. So I hope this was helpful. Good luck quitting shampoo and let me know how it goes in the comments if you do go ahead and experiment with and wanna report back. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.